Welcome to Brad Allen Drums. Today I'm going to teach you how to practice stick control by George Lawrence Stone. And this is the first part in a series of lessons. You can follow along in the book if you have a copy, but if not, you'll still learn a lot about stick control techniques by watching this video. By the way, if you're new to this channel, I'm Brad Allen. I'm a professional drummer based out of Kansas City, who also spent over 20 years teaching private drum lessons. And now I'm doing my best to pass along all that knowledge to you. The first thing you need to be able to do to practice stick control effectively is to be able to bounce the stick off the head like a ball. Getting started, you want to use a very loose grip. I teach my students to use an A-OK -okay sign using just the thumb and the index finger only. Just slip the stick in the hole you've made with your finger and thumb. Each stick is different, but you want to find the place that the stick balances so that you can easily bounce the stick off the head or the practice pad. And it's definitely easier to learn this on a tight head or practice pad. So if you need to, tighten up your head. All right, so it's like this. I'm going to drop the stick. You want to experiment with the fulcrum. Sometimes you have to move it forward a little bit or back. See, that's back too far. But there's a place in there where it balances. So that's the first step is to find that balance point. That's where you're going to hold the stick. By the way, I've got some bonus stick control exercises for you at the end of this video, so you'll want to watch it all the way to the end. After you've learned the basic technique of bouncing the stick off the head, you can start practicing out of the book. Start with exercise one, which is on page five of the book. The sticking is just right, left, right, left. Let the stick rebound about six to nine inches, and these are called half strokes. Take care that you're not pulling the stick back up into position. When you pull it back up, you're defeating the purpose of the exercise. It should bounce off the head like a ball. And in the beginning, you want to use a very loose grip. Don't hold on to the stick at all with your thumb and index finger in the beginning. Start slow, play each exercise like this four times, then move on to the next. You can practice pages five through seven this way. And you don't have to play all the pages either. You can just practice the first eight exercises and it'll accomplish basically the same thing for this particular exercise. Number three, when you feel like you have good control of the half strokes and can bounce the stick easily and consistently, increase the size of the stroke all the way up perpendicular to the head. These are called full strokes. You want to throw the stick and make it bounce all the way back up. And again, the most common mistake I see beginners make is they lift the stick up. You have to throw it hard with a relaxed grip so that it'll, so that it'll bounce all the way up. In order to develop speed, you need to make the stick do a lot of the work for you. And that's why you need to be able to bounce the stick off the head. And in the beginning, you're going to be using mostly wrists to make that stroke. Practice half strokes and full strokes using pages five through seven, 15 minutes a day for a week or two. Practice slow with a metronome, approximately eighth note equals 60 to 80 beats per minute. This is not a speed exercise, by the way. It's more of a co coordinated strength exercise. After you have gained control over half and full strokes and bouncing the stick using a very loose grip, you should start working on more control, more precision with the sticks. Practice pages five through seven again using softer strokes, about three inches to five inches off the head, and these are called taps. Keep your hands totally relaxed, but wrap your fingers and th thumb around the stick. Play each exercise four to 20 times without stopping. Practice with a metronome and gradually build up your speed. Don't play any faster than you can play relaxed. At slower speeds, the strokes you're playing are basically single strokes, and you'll use mostly wrists. As you start speeding the exercises up, you'll be playing double strokes for some of the exercises. You'll use more fingers at the faster tempos. And uh, by the way, I have a very effective and somewhat unusual exercise for developing your finger technique further. Follow the link in this video or in the comments below. I'm going to demonstrate here, for instance, with double strokes. If you play double strokes at a very slow tempo, if I'm pretty low to the head, I'm not really getting much of a bounce off the head, actually, at this tempo. That's why you start with half strokes or full strokes. Because down here, it's hard not to help the stick up. 
at that tempo. As you speed up, these are, two, these are still two single strokes, but eventually they start becoming double strokes about this tempo. So I'm basically bringing it down once, letting it bounce twice. And again, in the beginning, until you develop your fingers, you're going to be using mostly wrists, and that's okay, but eventually your fingers will develop. Continue practicing half and full strokes five to ten minutes daily along with the taps. Be patient and persistent. In the beginning, try to practice stick control about 20 minutes a day, and you'll see very fast results. As I mentioned earlier, this is the first video in a series on stick control. I'll be doing more soon. I also have a very extensive and detailed stick control course I've created as well that you should check out. It's called Killer Stick Control in 30 minutes a day. And I'll put uh, a link to it in the notes below. Now I have a bonus for you watching today. I have a free gift I'd like to send you. I have 10 of the best exercises for speed that I've created. And these are the same type of exercises that helped my student Matthew Lom win a fastest hands drumming competition two years in a row. Just follow the link in the video or in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.